My name is Angela Charles, and I am a singer-songwriter from Maryland, and I am going to be drawing my life. I'm fitting 30 years into under 15 minutes, so I'll do my best to give you a small piece of who I am and where I came from. My oldest brother's name is Michael, then there's Chris, Andrea, Brian, Jonathan, Philip, Joseph, Thomas, Mark, Anne Marie, and the youngest is Arlene, but I've called her Cubby ever since she was a baby. And there's my mom and my dad. Awesome arms. And ah, there's me. I am number five of 12 kids. And I cannot forget our godsend family member, Elise Saunders. We all call her Miss Elise. She helped take care of all of us from babies until I was almost 15. She's like a second mom to me. I honestly don't know how she stayed with us for so long because I remember my parents always hating each other and life was so chaotic and confusing and I remember being very, very sad. But you'd never know it because anywhere I went, I was always the kid with the biggest smile on my face. I always wondered why I struggle with love so much, but I look back and realize it probably stemmed from having to split broken love between 11 siblings. When people find out that I have such a large family, one of the first things they ask me is, Angela, are you gonna have 12 kids too? And I used to get so mad when people would ask this, but now I just, you know, I just sigh and I'm like, no, the answer's no. <laughs> I asked my mom, how did you do it? Why did you do it? And I, I honestly believe all of us were meant to be here, but my mom then told me that of all of her pregnancies, I made her the most miserable, and I don't know whether to be proud of that or upset. She said she was so sick, and that I bounced from the moment I could throughout the whole pregnancy. She said I came out bouncing, and she likes to joke that I haven't stopped bouncing. I was a very obnoxious kid. Um, I got teased a lot, but honestly, some of that had to do with me being disgusting. I hated taking a bath, and I'm pretty sure I went six months before without taking one, but, you know, I did get teased for things that I didn't have control over. When my baby teeth came out, my adult teeth grew in very crooked, and I didn't think they were that bad until I started getting teased. You know, these boys never let up. They would ask me things like, do you eat rock sandwiches or did you take a bite out of a firecracker? And the more they teased me, the sadder I got and the more I hated myself. You know, growing up, I didn't know any of my outside family. I don't know why, we just didn't. So when my granddad came back into my life, when I was a little older, one of the first things he said was, you know, Angela, for a pretty girl, you sure do have an ugly mouth. And it made me feel awful. And anytime he saw me, he would just make comments about my teeth. So I started covering my mouth when I'd smile, or I'd smile from my, quote, good side. <laughs> um, but eventually I got a job and I saved up. It took a long time, but I got braces, did everything my orthodontist said, and I was so excited for the day when my granddad would look at me and say, Angela, you're beautiful, without the backhanded compliments, you know, and had him on for three years and you know I only had three months left and we got a phone call saying that my granddad had a stroke and he was in a coma and unresponsive and my heart sank you know so I went to the hospital and I thought that maybe if I whispered in his ear that I only had three months left to get my braces off that he'd wake up you know uh, it was just our thing but it didn't work and he passed away and for some reason that affected me really, really bad. And I was so, so sad. And um, I don't like that that was my relationship with my grandfather, but the good thing that came of this is I can understand my dad more. You know, when you're a kid, you can't understand your parents. You don't know why they do things. You, you don't even have the ability to do that, but Spending that little time with my granddad helps me understand why my dad is the way that he is. You know, he never told us about his childhood. I don't know anything about his childhood. And when I spent that little time with my grandfather, 
and he affected me that much. I can't imagine growing up in my father's shoes. And I probably would have been really sad or really angry. And to be honest, I really did truly go through those seasons of anger and sadness. But before you judge my granddad, you know, he's Creole from New Orleans. And he grew up in a time where how you looked truly meant everything. You know, there was a caste system of color, and the lighter you were, the better your life was, so I guess it makes sense. You know, how he raised my dad affected how my dad raised us, and I remember always being in trouble. Everything was taboo, and when we weren't in trouble for something we did, we were getting punished for things my dad knew that we were going to do in the future, and it made me turned into a really paranoid kid. I was always sad. I, I always knew that nothing I ever did would be good enough. And you know, one of the things he kept from us was music because it was of the devil. So when people ask me what my influences are, I just tell them TV, commercials, you know. Um, I didn't associate it with music because I guess it wasn't coming from the forbidden radio. And I don't know, that's just the way my brain worked back then. But I do remember when my brothers got their licenses, they got bold with the stations. And, you know, they'd change it back before they gave the car back to my dad. But I remember sitting in the back seat and hearing, no doubt, don't speak, and ready or not by the Fugees. And I don't know if you can even imagine what it was like going from hearing only these boring, boring church hymns to this music that I knew I was not supposed to be listening to and I just thought it was so amazing and I can't tell you what was happening in my heart when I heard that music and like I just knew I wanted to do that I didn't know how because I knew I'd never be supported so I buried it deep I didn't act excited about it but you know a couple years later uh, when I was 15 I remember going to the store with my mom and I saw one of those cheap $50 guitars and I knew I was supposed to leave with it. And I asked her, I was like, can you please get this for me? And you know, I knew I'd get in trouble, but I said, I'll keep it a secret. And she reluctantly said, okay. I'm so thankful that she did because it changed my life. I got a book, Guitar for Dummies, started learning chords and writing terrible songs immediately. You know, I started a band, it didn't last long. Then a couple months after that, I recorded a demo on a friend's computer, handed so many of those things out. And at the time I thought it was the best thing ever, but recently a friend of mine found hers and sent it to me and I was so embarrassed. It was so awful, <laughs> but I do not regret it because a friend of mine uh, actually handed one of these to a friend of hers who owned a production company and they thought I had potential and they took me on as their artist and uh, I don't think they realized what they were getting into because I had just recently gotten kicked out of my house and I was so sheltered. Um, I didn't know how to be an adult. I didn't know how to talk to people. I was so awkward and they didn't believe me when they first met me. They thought I was joking with how little bit that I knew and they shortly realized after that I I was serious, you know, so they taught me how to be an adult. They taught me all the music that I missed, or at least some of it. And um, it didn't work out with them, but I did get to meet one of my best friends and music mentors to this day, Levi Stevens. We connected on a musical level that was crazy, and we got along really well, but even still, I didn't know how to talk about my feelings and what was going on behind the scenes, and so many things had happened. I was so depressed. I became anorexic and I lost so much weight and if it wasn't for my mom and my sisters helping me eat and nursing me back to health, I probably would have died. You know, so I left the production company and I just didn't know how to balance following my heart in real life and anyone who's been in that situation knows what I mean by that. You know, at the time where I am right now, I was living with a group of friends and this was the first time in a while I had been home alone. I was sleep deprived, just sad, trying to relax, and I was drinking my favorite drink, and the song came to me out of nowhere, and I hated it, recorded it, <laughs> and I almost deleted it, but I'm glad I didn't, because a couple months later, just out of curiosity, I was like, I wonder what Justin would think about this. 
Justin is one of my best friends, and he was the guitarist in my first band, and we grew up together, and he's, he's an honest, honest person to the point where sometimes it's annoying, but I really value his opinion, and he's really good at what he does with music, and, you know, I sent it to him, and he messaged me back and said, Angela, I love your song, and I was like, seriously? And he's like, seriously, let's record it, and I was like, all right. So I went in the studio, and Justin brought my song to life, and it felt really good knowing that after you know, eight years of wanting to put out an album, I just wanted to put out something. It just felt good knowing that I was going to put something out. And so on October 26, 2010, I released my single, Every Second Feels Like Days, onto iTunes. And I wish I had better news to follow, but I didn't do anything with it because I was still very, very depressed and sad. And, um, you know, a year after that, I just felt like I should make a music video. I don't know why. And so I did and posted it on YouTube and I thought maybe that would help me want to do music more, but it didn't. And so for the past couple of years, I haven't done anything musically. I've just been growing and finding out who I am. And it took me these past years to realize that I really do want to do music, but I was so scared. I didn't know how to begin again and I wasn't ready to perform live. So I just put a feeler out on Facebook and asked people what covers they'd want me to play and so I said I'd post it on YouTube and the response was unbelievable and I got so many requests I had to start a series and I started feeling happy again it was crazy and you know one night I went to Autobar in Baltimore and um, Turquoise Jeep from the YouTube stars were performing there it was so fun afterwards they talked to me I told them about my series Young Hummer requested that I do one of their songs. I did it, they loved it. I was like, wow, I felt alive again. And so I started playing live. So many open mics and I met so many musicians and photographers and live local music facilitators. And I got invited to play this singer-songwriter series called The Nine. And when I was making this video, just out of curiosity, I went through and I wrote down all of these creative types that I met this past year, or reconnected with, and I was shocked. I was shocked because the thought of where would I be now if a little over a year ago I didn't take that step, you know, I was so broken. My heart was just hurting so bad, but every person that I've met has healed a piece of my heart that I never thought that I would get back. And, you know, I have a long way to go. I know I'm not there yet, but I'm so far from where I used to be and I'm actually happy for the first time in my life and I know I have so much music to give and it's just in there waiting to come out and I've let fear stop me so many times and I just want to finally put out this album that I've been trying to do for a decade and I don't know if I'm ready, I don't know if I'll ever be ready but you're never ready, you know? What I do know is that I'm surrounded by people who love me and won't let me forget that I was put on this earth to sing and so anyone who has supported me all these years, who shared my videos, subscribed to me, and just encouraged me, I couldn't be where I am now without you. And I'm really excited for where my journey is gonna take me.